Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the need for clotting, blood platelets, the clotting cascade, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the process of forming a blood clot is a really important function in order for survival. So if a blood vessel ever gets damaged, there's a chance that there could be some bleeding, and this could be either internal bleeding, which means that we bleed into our own body, or external bleeding into the environment. So remember the cardiovascular system is comprised of tubes, including arteries, veins, and capillaries. And all of the time the blood is pumping through our body, it's contained in these vessels. Some organisms have a different structure, but that's not really what this video is about. If there's ever damage on the walls or through the walls of these vessels, then blood is able to now escape the tube and enter areas that it usually is not allowed to go to. And if this was, for example, a vessel traveling to the stomach, if that was injured, the blood could flow into the abdominal cavity and we would be internally bleeding. If this was close to the skin, where we may experience some trauma, which cut through the skin and then through to the blood vessel, the blood may eventually leak out of the skin and we can see the bleeding ourselves, and this would be external bleeding. But essentially what's happening is the red blood cells and the plasma are escaping through a wound or a damaged vessel, and this is what we call bleeding. And the endothelial cells, which are the cells that line the inside of all of our blood vessels, which are in the wall of the vessels, don't divide fast enough to just stop the bleeding by making new cells and repairing the hole. So the endothelium lines the inside of every blood vessel, and it's essentially a sheet rolled up into a tube of individual cells in a one cell layer. This is the case for arteries, veins, and capillaries, and capillaries are just endothelium. So these are obviously being damaged because the blood that was flowing in the vessel is now escaping through a damaged endothelium. And the overall function is that eventually the endothelium would replace themselves to form a new set of cells that would fill up that hole that's been created. But obviously this is too slow as a process, so while we're bleeding, it would not be a very good idea to wait for these cells to divide because we would lose a lot of blood and this is very dangerous. So to overcome this, the blood has something else which can save a damaged vessel. Cell fragments are found in the plasma of the blood, so not complete cells, but sort of fragments of cytoplasm, and they're called platelets and these cause the blood to clot around the damaged part of the vessel. So if we're to look at a section of blood here, we've got our red blood cells, which make up the largest component, but we've also got the small fragments of cells, which are known as platelets. And we won't go into detail about where they're formed, but they're made continuously as the red blood cells are, and they're sort of fragments of cells with some cytoplasm, some organelles, and a little bit of material, and they sort of just float around in the plasma until they're required. And it's these that contribute to the clots which form to save the vessel from continuously leaking. So let's talk about what the blood platelets actually do and how they overcome the bleeding. So the first thing that happens is if we've damaged a blood vessel, the wall is damaged and the blood is leaking out. So the lumen and the blood that was flowing in the lumen of the vessel is now exposed to the collagen that lies in the blood vessel wall. So remember usually, especially for vessels like large arteries and veins, there's collagen present in the walls. And collagen is a very abundant protein in the body. And it gives it the strength and rigidity to withstand the pressure that's, that's forming inside the vessel. So now that we've cut through this wall, that collagen is exposing itself to the blood. And this interaction is very important because when platelets come into contact with this collagen, they start changing. And they go from being discs, which they exist in the plasma in that form, to a spherical shape, and they grow these long thin projections which stick out from them. So usually when they're flowing in the blood, they don't alter their shape because there's no collagen that's being exposed. However, when they eventually reach a damaged part of the vessel and there's collagen being exposed, they change their shape and they grow these long processes out from their body and they sort of grow in size as if they're trying to spread. So they get these projections. The change in shape enables the blood platelets to become more sticky. So first of all, they start sticking to this exposed collagen, and then they stick to each other, and then they stick to other blood cells which are trying to escape. So they kind of form this sticky tumble of sticky components. So you've got the platelets which are along spherical cells with all these projections, and first of all, they're going to be sticking to the collagen in the blood vessel wall. And as they do this, they start sort of covering that hole a little bit that's been made, and any red blood cells that are trying to escape will also stick as well. So you can imagine this massive sticky mess starts forming a big plug, which eventually acts as a clot. The change in the shape of the platelets also causes them to release a chemical, which helps prevent bleeding as well. So as the platelets become activated, 
they change their shape and eventually they start releasing chemicals which are usually hormones and these can act on the nearby blood vessels and cause them to reduce bleeding and the way they usually do this is by vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction is when a vessel narrows itself so it has a reduced flow and this means that because of this there's less blood flowing to this area and it can be saved and blood can be diverted to areas which need it more and therefore we can save ourselves from bleeding too much. So not only do the platelets start forming a plug in the damaged wall, they also help to save blood that's being lost. So up to this point what we've had is activated platelets forming a general clot to cover the hole that's made in the vessel. But this can't last forever and we need a more stable structure which can withstand the pressures running through the vessel while the endothelium repairs itself. So what happens is there's actually a cascade of chemical reactions which happens as well as all of this, helping to finalise the clot. So the blood platelets in the damaged vessel start releasing chemicals and this chemical that's first released is thromboplastin and this triggers something called the clotting cascade. So the clotting cascade is basically where there's a chemical released, so we'll call this T just for thromboplastin. And what thromboplastin will do is it will activate one chemical, which then activates another chemical, and another and another. And there's a complicated set of enzyme and protein reactions which follow after each other, and that's why we call it the clotting cascade. Cascade generally means sort of a following on or a course, and so the clotting cascade is this interaction of proteins. And we call it the clotting cascade, which is a series of enzyme-controlled reactions in the blood leading to the formation of a blood clot. So the thromboplastin that's been released from platelets, which have been activated by interacting with the collagen in the wall, triggers an enzyme to catalyze conversion of another chemical called prothrombin into an enzyme known as thrombin. So let's illustrate this out. So what we've had is we've had a blood vessel which has been damaged and the blood running through it has interacted with the damaged wall. So the platelets become activated. And this is where they change their shape and they start interacting and sticking together. When the platelets are activated, they release the chemical thromboplastin. And we'll just put thromboplastin as this circular molecule, so it's a type of protein. The thromboplastin then is able to catalyze the activation of prothrombin to thrombin. And thrombin is a particular enzyme which will be used in clotting. So it can be confusing to remember all of these names, but one way to remember this is that if you can remember thromboplastin as being the first, it's turning something into its activated form. So pro usually means before or head of. So prothrombin is kind of like the pre-form of the thrombin. So the prothrombin is losing the pro part and becoming thrombin. The second stage to this is where that enzyme thrombin catalyzes the next reaction, converting a particular protein which is soluble in the blood known as fibrinogen into an insoluble form which is called fibrin or fibrin and this forms a mesh around the clot and this is really important to stabilizing the hole. So let's go through again. So we have thromboplastin which turned a protein known as prothrombin into thrombin and thrombin is an enzyme. What we then have is that in the blood there are these soluble proteins known as fibrinogen. Fibrinogen doesn't really do anything until it's told to do so. And the thing that tells it to do so is this thrombin molecule. So the fibrinogen interacts with this thrombin, which is now present, and it is turned into fibrin, which is insoluble. And because it's insoluble, it can no longer stay in the blood. And what it does is it starts to escape the blood and starts forming these long mesh-like strands. And fibrin is a fibrous protein, and it helps cover this blood clot and form a sort of stable structure. So in this gaping wound of the blood vessel, we've got all of these platelets sticking together. We've got red blood cells which are being caught in their stickiness. And then we've got this fibrin which is forming, this purple insoluble fibrin, forming a mesh all around the structure, just kind of encapsulating it. And therefore it's connecting all of these holes together and forming a nice blood clot. So this cascade has activated this blood clot to start forming. And the fibrin mesh not only encapsulates that blood clot, but it helps to trap more platelets and more red blood cells, forming this blood clot. And as it traps more platelets, they'll become activated again and restart the process. So it just keeps kind of forming and growing and growing. And then eventually, after a certain amount of time has passed, the endothelial cells lining the blood vessel will have had sufficient time to surround this blood clot, repair the vessel, and then eventually the blood clot will be broken down when it's not needed. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. 
Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.